This is a production of Cornell University. We're here at the Cornell Orchards in early August. Uh, we want to talk about sampling plants for leaf analysis. We find that leaves sampled at this time of the year give us a much better indication of the nutritional status of the plants than would a soil test taken at any time of the year because the leaves are actually measuring what's taken up into the plant and incorporated. Also, if we sample the plants too early in the spring, the levels are fluctuating dramatically because the plants are growing so fast, they're producing fruit, um, and the levels just aren't uh, consistent from one week to the other. But if we wait until August, things kind of settle down and stabilize, it's a much better time. And also, if we wait too much to the, towards the end of the season, then the nutrients start uh, being taken back into the plant and down into the roots so we don't get very good readings either. So late July, early August is usually the ideal time for almost all of our fruit crops. So here we are in a blueberry planting and we want to look at a plant to take leaves from. So the question is what are the best leaves to take that most represent the nutritional status of the plant? And the answer is for blueberries and for all plants is the most recently fully expanded leaves. So on this blueberry plant, uh, the shoot started growing this year from this point, and it's grown up to here. These leaves at the tip are the youngest leaves. They're not very representative. The leaves at the bottom are a couple of months old now. They're not very representative either. The leaves we want to take are those in this zone right here, the, the most recently fully expanded leaves. So these are the leaves we would take for leaf analysis. Now we want to take all the leaves off the shoot like that. I mean, that's not really what we want to do. We want to randomly sample throughout the planting. So we might take one or two leaves from this shoot, one or two leaves from another shoot on this plant, but then move around the planting and sample leaves from this position throughout the planting until we get a good representative sample. On strawberries, we also want to uh, select the most recently fully expanded leaf. And on a plant like this, uh, some of these leaves are a little bit older, you fold those down, look at the crown, and pick the youngest leaf that's just about fully expanded. So in that case, it would be this leaf here. And again, you would collect about 50 of these leaves in a sort of a random pattern throughout the planting. And again, best results would be obtained if you could do that for one variety as opposed to mixing your varieties. On raspberries and blackberries, it's important to distinguish the floor canes from the primocanes because when we leaf sample we only want to select leaves from the primocanes. So this is a floricane because it produced fruit this year and now it's starting to die. The leaves are turning yellow and so that doesn't make a very good representative sample of the nutritional status of the planting. Instead we go to the primocanes which represent this year's current growth. We look at the cane and we again want to select the most recently expanded leaves. So those are not the leaves here. These aren't fully expanded yet. The plant's still growing. The leaves down here are older. So we want to take the leaves from this zone here because these are fully expanded and they're the most recent because the plant is growing in this direction. So we would again take a couple of leaves from that section of a primocane and then do the same thing from another primocane and probably 50 primocanes in a planting would be a good representative sample. For blackberries, we want to distinguish between the floricanes, which have fruit, and the primocanes, which don't have fruit. We want to sample from the primocanes, the most recently expanded leaves, not in this section here because these are still in the process of expanding. We want to sample from this section of the cane here, which has the most fully expanded leaves and they're the youngest since the plant is growing in this direction. So we would take maybe a leaf from here and a leaf from here and do that with maybe 50 primocanes in the planting. Your most consistent results are going to be obtained when you can sample from the same variety of the same age. Obviously, if you mix varieties, the numbers are going to vary a little bit more. They're not going to be as consistent the same way if you sample plants from different ages. So under an ideal situation, the same variety and the same age. But we understand that oftentimes growers have mixed plantings with mixed varieties and mixed ages, and you don't want to take 10 or 20 samples from a single planting. So, the choices are, you know, just sample from multiple varieties, multiple ages, and get a bulk composite sample and see if you're in the ballpark. Or 
just pick one of the varieties and assume that's going to represent the nutritional level of the other plants. What is uh, sometimes done though, if there's a section of your field that looks particularly problematic, the leaves are discolored, the plants aren't growing well enough, there you should uh, sample from that section of the field separately from the rest of the field that's healthy. Then we can compare the two and it gives us a really good idea diagnostically what might be going on there, what's different between the affected area and the unaffected area. It might be pathogenic, it might be an herbicide residue, but if it's nutritional we'll be able to pick that up by looking at the leaves in the affected area and outside the affected area. These leaves should be washed off, preferably in distilled water. Uh, if we use regular tap water, sometimes when that dries, it deposits uh, calcium on the leaves, and then we might get an erroneous reading. But if we wash it with distilled water, and then we, these are going to be dried when they get to the lab. So you can dry them too. They don't have to be kept moist. They can just be put in a paper bag, put in a windowsill for a few days until you can send them in. But they go into the lab and they get dried, and then within a few days, uh, they can tell you what the nutrient levels are in these leaves. And we have recommendations that we can look at and say, here are the levels in your leaves, here's what they should be, then we can make recommendations as to what you need to do to correct any problem that might exist. If you do the leaf analysis now, this time of the year, you'll get recommendations back, and a lot of those recommendations can be acted on in the fall. Actually, late fall is a very good time to be putting fertilizer on your plant because it gives it time to work into the soil and be available to be taken up by the roots in the spring. Nitrogen is the only nutrient that we usually don't put on in the fall. We usually wait for spring to do that. When you go back to your leaf analysis, it will give you values for maybe 13 essential nutrients, one of which is nitrogen. There'll be phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and the list goes on. And the recommendations for almost everything can be applied in the fall. Uh, wait till spring for nitrogen. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.